Hi, I'm Aaron Ra, and you're watching Atheist Edge. So uh, you lead with, here's what, quote unquote, religion of peace does when it gets offended by drawings of their false prophet. And you list a bunch of, we don't need to go into all of them. I think to save time, we can just do the last one. Uh, but you give a lot of examples of examples of Muslims freaking out over the drawing of uh, Muhammad and engaging in uh, various crimes, essentially, as I would call them. Um, but here's a typical example, and this, this is a good example of this. Now, the, the problem I have with this verse, or this passage in your book, is that uh, you, you credit all Islam with this. Like, the religion of, this is what the religion of peace does when it gets offended. So you're reifying Islam as a thing. Um, really, it's just extremely small few Muslims that do this. And when you start looking at Christians who've done exactly the same stuff and are still doing exactly the same stuff, the percentages aren't really all that different. Um, but there's an important example. Uh, the example, the last one you gave, which is dear to your heart because it's it's Texas. Little it's right up the street for me. It's like 20 minutes for me. So the item, like you give several other examples, but the, the one item, I mean, Charlie Hebdo, for example, we, we, examples are easy, you're fine. Um, but here's the one in Texas. Two individuals opened fire on police officers at a quote unquote draw Muhammad exi art exhibit in Garland, Texas. The attackers were quickly killed by return fire, which is true. Um, this is a good typical example of what we're talking about here. Now, uh, for everything I'm about to mention, uh, there's an important article I think people should read on this, uh, which is, I have it in my blog, and I can give you the link for it uh, for the color text below. But um, it's the quote is, you might be an Islamophobe if dot, dot, dot. Uh, and then I go into what's the difference between legitimate criticism of Islam or legitimately framed criticism of Islam and what it, what constitutes Islamophobia, which is fear mongering, you know, trying to get people to be afraid of Muslims in general. Uh, and I think this kind of stuff, uh, if it's not framed correctly, does gin up fear of Muslims in the same way it would be like, you know, if, uh, we've, we've had Christian terrorism in the U.S. for hundreds of years. I mean, you've got the Civil War, the Trail of Tears, the Ku Klux Klan, uh, Christian terrorist, Christian Al-Qaeda has been a thing for a while. I would add January um, 6th to that, in, in a well, way. Well, true, but, think but that's, about it. That's, 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 I agree, that was totally a Christian nationalist movement uh, action. Um, but that, that's actually, the, it was the less deadly of them. There have been deadlier mm -hmm. Christian nationalist acts of terrorism in the U.S. that are far more serious uh, in, in, in terms of capital casualties right if, if that's what you're going to focus on uh is the casualties um but so we, we have a history of christian terrorism in the u.s uh but you think like timothy mcveigh uh and and be outside the u.s we've got anders brevik and dylan and dylan roof in the u.s um we had uh, brenton tarrant uh in new zealand the mass shooter there uh wade michael page the sikh temple killer uh in uh mass shooter in the u.s um, Eric Rudolph, who was the Olympic Park bomber. I mean, you, you have this long list of these Christian nationalist terrorists that we have in the U.S. Uh, and they, they pair up, you know, one to one for all the Muslims doing the same thing. Like, like you can talk about these Christian nationalists definitely as uh, prone to violence, uh, definitely have extremely uh, anti-humanist messages. Like they're, they're usually sexist, they're usually misogynist, they're usually anti-gay, um, they're fascists. Uh, and they definitely support violence and traffic violence uh, in the U.S. even. Like some of the largest incidents of terror in the U.S. have been caused by these Christian nationalists. But it would be inaccurate to credit all of Christianity with that. Say like, oh, those fucking Episcopalians, how dare they shoot up the Sikh temple? Like that, that would not be a valid uh, way to proceed. So rather than ginning up fear against Christians, like every Christian you meet might kill you at any moment. Uh, that's not true. Uh, there are Christian radicals who could kill you, like, right? Like, but they're, they don't, they aren't representative of Christianity. They are a toxic, virulent sort of byproduct of Christianity, like Christianity as an ideology without uh, any epistemic controls that sort of, that, that sort of restrict um, how, how quickly you believe anything you're freaking told that agrees with your worldview. In other words, basic, decent rationalism, critical thinking. Um, this is how you can have these religions can spin out these violent predators that we get. Christianity does this, Islam does this, Hinduism does this, Hindu nationalism is a se is severe and political uh, danger, um, certainly in India uh, and eventually possibly to the world if India starts becoming a global power. Even Buddhists have fucking terrorists. Buddhists, <laughs> right? Uh, so um, so I think like you can't, I think it's, it's disingenuous and perhaps problematic to actually try to uh, 
vilify and fearmonger over a whole religion. Everybody practices a religion based on the few rare radicals uh, who engage in extremism. We need to target the extremism and the extremist ideologies. The jihadism is the proper target here, uh, not Islam as such. Islam has problems and does contribute to this in terms of the ideology. That's worth criticizing and pointing out, just as we do with Christianity. We talk about like Christianity. I mean, you look at the Bible versus the Quran. The Quran never has any commandment to execute homosexuals. The Bible does, right? So the Bible is actually yep. more uh, promoting of violence against gay people than the Quran is. And now, of course, culturally, Islam has grown up highly anti, uh, anti-gay, very Islamophobic or very homophobic. Um, but so did Christianity, right? And so was Judaism for the longest time. Uh, it's, it's actually as cultures have become wealthier and more enlightened, Judaism and Christianity became less homophobic. Uh, I say less because there's still a lot of homophobia still going on, especially among Orthodox Jews uh, and among conservative Christians. Um, but anyway, I talk about this and I give examples in my article. Uh, you might be an Islamophobe if. Um, but it's important to remember that, right? Like th- these are similar things. And it's important for this because here, let's tell the story of Garland, Texas, of what happened there. Um, Oh, and also another, I should mention, uh, of course, Patrick Crucius, uh, the El Paso shooter recently, another Christian nationalist. I don't killed more people than in Garland. So, uh, oh, wow. and that, that was very recently, like 2019, I think, or something. Mm. Uh, yeah, you've got, you know, several recent synagogue shootings in the U.S. from Christian nationalists, uh, the abortion provider shootings in, you know, the 90s. But anyway, the point is, let's get to the, so here's the thing. This is the weird thing about the Garland, Texas uh, incident. So, uh, in your area, in the Dallas, Fort Worth, Garland, Texas area, and even if you count, even in that area, but if you count all of North Texas, but even especially just in that metro region, you have over 100,000 Muslims. It's one of the largest Muslim, uh, Texas has one of the largest Muslim populations of the U.S. I think it's eighth out of 50 in terms of number of Muslims. Uh, do you know how many of those Muslims, the Texas Muslims, attacked anyone in Garland? zero yeah they came the, the single, two that, correct yes those two you, came from out of they state. had to drive in from phoenix arizona right, right. It, it gets weirder all right okay so not only did they have to outsource their terrorism <laughs> so uh so like the, the actual muslims a hundred thousand muslims in texas didn't care about the drama hobbit thing they didn't do anything they didn't even protest like they're like eh, whatever like we don't really give a shit so they so the the radicals had to import people in. they had to get them in from phoenix arizona and it was two roommates both of whom were ex-Christians. They were actually, they're native, born, Amer- uh, born in America, raised Christian and converted to Islam. So they're not even, they weren't even raised Muslim. Uh, and they wouldn't have even done this. They, they were uh, a, a couple of jihadist sort of crazies in Phoenix, Arizona, who for years were looking for a tar- target. They thought, well, we'd hit a military base or whatever. Like they were trying to find a target. And the reason they went to Garland, now one of the two shooters was from Garland, but he didn't live there at the time. He, he'd long since left. Um, but his attachment to Garland might have been how this appeal worked with them. But they were coaxed into going to shooting that up by uh, an internet troll uh, who's now in jail, in prison for terrorism uh, because he does this. He was a troll, internet troll, Jewish internet troll, uh, Joshua Ryan Goldberg. Uh, not Muslim, not Christian, uh, but he was inciting people to commit acts of terrorism all over the world. Uh, he was caught, and and in part for the Garland incident for his his role in instigating that, he's, he's doing time. Um, so it was it was it was some crazy motherfucking Jewish internet troll gins up these two lunatic Muslims all the way in Phoenix, Arizona, convinces them to drive all the way to Garland, Texas, to shoot this thing up. And as is usually the case for terrorists, if you look at most terrorist incidents, it's uh, the only reason 911 worked is that no one thought uh, at that time, no one thought they'd use the planes as missiles. But otherwise, if you think about the plan, the 911, they had fucking box cutters. That was their plan, right? Uh, and, and if we knew that, that they were going to use the planes as missiles, they would never have succeeded. And it's what did you get after them? Al Qaeda threw us the underwear bomber, the shoe bomber. These are fucking idiotic plans that completely failed. Um, they're dumb. And so these guys go to try to shoot up Garland, Texas and get themselves fucked, or one of them gets fucking shot right away and the other is immediately captured. I, it was one of the lamest incidents of terrorism. Terrorists are usually the worst at strategic and tactical planning, which gets us back to the Christian nationalist assault on the Capitol on January 6th. 
<laughs> which is one of the most incompetent insurrections ever attempted in the history of history. So, uh, but anyway, that's that's the saving grace. The terrorists are usually stupid. Uh, but the point is, is like they had to import it. Like most, so that most or all Muslims in Texas were not violent Muslims. They weren't extremists. They weren't going to suppress people for drawing Muhammad. And I think it's worth pointing out is that this is it's less than one in one hundred thousand. Uh, Muslims engage in this kind of violence, but it, you could do the same thing with Christians. Less than one in 100,000 Christians engaged in Christian nationalism, nationalist violence. Now, the ideologies contribute to this, so I think it's totally appropriate to attack the ideologies. Islam is not uh, inherently, any more than Christianity is, they are not inherently peaceful religions. They're actually inherently very violent, savage religions, very superstitious and primitive religions, and can lead people to do horrible things. So I think ideologies are dangerous. Um, the, to lead people to actual violence is very rare. Usually what it leads them to do is suppress rights in more traditional ways. So all the Christian control of the Republican Party, all their attempt to suppress abortion through the law uh, is much more impactful. Uh, I'm much more worried about the fact that the family, the quote, the Christian nationalist movement within Congress uh, that controls, that has a huge lobbying group that controls a lot of Congress, um, that they are that close to the nuclear arsenal. Like that's more dangerous in my mind uh, than whether drawing Muhammad is going to get somebody killed. Uh, if it does get somebody killed, it's because there are so many Muslims that if you have one in a hundred thousand goes flip out like that, then you're going to have one, right? So, um, but I think it's important to really keep this in mind that Christian nationalists are just as much a threat as jihadists and Christian nationalists are not Christians in this, in the broad sense, like this Episcopalians are not Christian nationalists. Uh, jihadists are Muslims, but not all Muslims are jihadists. And I think it's important to make distinctions. I think we should vilify if we're going to vilify for violence and for this kind of ridiculous violence too, like over the drawing of Muhammad, we need to attack the actual sect, uh, the actual ideological beliefs that are going at it, which is the jihadist ideology, which is not, it is a variety of Muslim ideology, but it, to try to vilify all Muslims is, I think, problematic. And we know it's problematic because we have tons of data of violence against Muslims because ginned up by this fear and hatred of Muslims. So innocent Muslims get their synagogue shot up, or not the synagogues, the, uh, their um, uh, temples shot up. What is it? What are they called? Mosques. Mosques. There we go. So yeah, Muslims getting their mosques shut up, Muslims getting uh, getting attacked, and so on. Uh, and so that that we don't want to support, we don't want to gin that up either. We don't want to if 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 we want to respond appropriately to people getting ginned up over uh, drawing Muhammad, we shouldn't be ginning people up to go attack and kill them either. Like that, uh, they're certainly not the wrong targets. Like to, if you have the jihadists kill someone for drawing Muhammad, and then we get someone to go kill some peaceful Muslim who's not even a jihadist. We're doing the same, uh, and and so we should avoid doing that, or at least the, so if we're going to do criticism of Islam, we need to be responsible about it. Uh, and so this this focus on attributing all Islam to killing people over drawing Muhammad, I think, is misleading and problematic. Uh, we shouldn't do that. We can mention it, we can discuss it, but we need to hit the right target and not scatter shot all Muslims over it. In the course of, yeah, I, know. I, I acknowledge what you're saying, but I have to push back. And so I wrote five notes so you can comment on any of these five. And uh, I, I will probably edit this sure. one just a bit, just for time, not content. But we'll have to, yeah. The first one being, um, uh, you, you talk about the radical is, uh, radical ideas in the Quran. You, you cannot discount the Hadith because that is followed just oh, yeah. as much as the, the Quran. No, we just like the Talmud, right? The, yes, if you want exactly. to get into like dirty the shit in the, in the Hadith, we can get into some really horrible shit in the Talmud. Right. So we can't discount uh, the Hadith. So it, it's similar. Christianity has the same thing. No, they don't, uh, Christianity they don't follow has the, same the Apocrypha. Thing, right? No, no, no. Uh, the equivalent. So the Hadith is a collection of sayings that you're supposed to treat as authoritative. Mm -hmm. Christian churches have the same thing. They're called, uh, so we, we have like, let's take, for example, the Methodist uh, church. They have a list of, of explicit doctrines that you're supposed to believe to be a good Methodist. Yeah, true. And recently there was a conflict over the the, the homophobic stuff in there. Like, so like they, they were condemning homosexuals, banning them from service and so on, They're even banning them from their churches. Uh, and and that's that's their that's the equivalent of hadith. That's a hadith, right? Uh, and they the people who are trying to be progressive to try and change that, get rid of it, and, and make it more uh, uh, friendly and more e equalitarian, uh, they lost 
uh, they, they didn't succeed. So, uh, so that's the Methodists who are not even the most, like that's not the Southern get the Baptist, uh, you know, uh, synod or anything like the Lutherans, like, so like the, the conservative Lutheran synod, uh, the Catholic church has a huge collection of teachings that you're supposed to follow that are not, and including you, you can't be gay and be a priest. You can't even in service in any faction under the Catholic right. church. Uh, so, um, so, the, so, the, so the Christians have their own Hadith. Uh, and it ha and it has had historically horrible things in it, and still in many cases has a lot of backwards things in it. Okay. Um, and I, I think it, with Islam too, especially, not all Muslims even follow the Hadith, right? Or or even assume that you you're supposed to follow all of the Hadith. Uh, uh, it, there, there is just as much variety in how you treat the Hadith, and also sectarian. There's sectarian differences into whose Hadith counts. Right. Uh, but, right. But, but it's some... similar to the Talmud, if you look at Jews and the Talmud. If you were to compare Jews with the Talmud and then go look at most Muslims in Turkey, uh, for instance, or Indonesia, um, Muslims there don't really give a shit about the Hadith nearly as much. You can find Muslims who give a shit about the Hadith, just as you can find Orthodox Muslims who give a shit, or Orthodox Jews who give a shit about the Talmud. Um, but, but most Jews are like, ah, the Talmud, ah, that's old. We don't really follow that anymore. Uh, we follow some, we choose, pick and choose what we'll follow from it. Same as Christians do with the Bible. Uh, and it's the same with Muslims. Like, so it, it depends on which populations you're talking about, uh, where these Muslims are coming from and where they've lived. Uh, this is another point that I was going to get to. Um, I'm not, you didn't assign me to do a number. What is it? There's an, a number 549. Um, but I was going to comment on that a little because uh oh yeah because there's some yeah. errors there's actually some factual errors in that um and that one is based on a pew poll if i remember right yeah that's a 2015 or 16 pew poll oh yeah there's another poll that's no it's that's not the poll that's well that that poll had its own problems uh but the point i wanted to make that's relevant here is that poll was not a random poll of British Muslims. So, so, so when it says survey found uh, British Muslims, false. Uh, it did not randomize uh, the British population of Muslims. Uh, it actually targeted uh, concentrated poor communities. So, um, highly ghettoized Muslim communities in the UK. Disaffected. Uh, so it skews the data. Well, there's. I mean, that's true too. But it, no, there's the bigger problem. There is that um, most first generation immigrants, like the boat immigrants, they go where the resources are to support them. So if the only people who support them are Muslim, certain Muslim communities, they're going to go to the Muslim communities. So yeah, so when you're polling those communities, you're polling mostly people fresh off the boat. You're polling, you know, Pakistanis, you're polling Iraqis, you're polling Iranians, and, and you know, you're whoever you whoever the, the refugees are, Syrians say, or whatever. So you're polling fresh immigrants. Uh, if you were to do that with like Catholics, coming in from Central and South America, you would get the exact same skewed extremist conservative views. What happens is when we track these populations, so they're going to have kids in the UK, they'll be UK born, and then they will have kids and they will be UK, they'll be third generation Muslim uh, UK. So if you were to actually look by generation, uh, you would find that, that the view of Muslims just drifts into the general view of the population. Uh, so that by third generation, Muslims are just like everybody else, basically. They're, uh, they're just like Christians. I would say the model that their views would track exactly like conservative Christians. And the amount of them that are conservative would be the same. The amount of them that stayed Muslim would be the same. So basically, they just wash out. Uh, you give them three generations, they just like everybody else in the country. But if you just focus on people fresh off the boat, you're not really putting Brits. You're from other countries who were raised in, you know, different environments that were much uh, less enlightened, we would say, right? Um, what we want to know is uh, uh, what happens when when they assimilate, basically, when, when give them a few generations. Now, it is relevant, though, if you're going to bring immigrants in, you want to know what kinds of ideas you're immediately, in, you know, bringing into the population. And that's where uh, some of these polls become a problem. The, the 549 one was not such a problem. I'll give you an example. Um, uh, so for example, the survey found that British Muslims, quote unquote, but it just really means, uh, conservative Muslims in certain communities, <clears throat> they're more likely than the general population to sympathize with terrorism as a form of political protest. Uh, but the support was very low. It was 4%. So these are the highly concentrated, fresh off the boat, most conservative Muslims that you can get in England. Only 4% of them 
sympathized with terrorism as a means uh, of uh, means to an end, um, compared to one percent with the general public. Now, I guarantee you, by the third generation, their their grandkids are going to agree. They're going to be one percent, right? So, um, but if you were to look at Christians, how many Christians support terrorism in the advancement of the causes of Christianity? How many support torture? Uh, like it's going to be more than 4% if you look only at conservative Christians. So really these Muslims don't look any different than Christians. They're just like Christians basically. Uh, and if you poll conservative Muslims, you're poll it's just like conservative Christians. Like it's the same ideology. There's nothing peculiar about it. Uh, and so, um, and the percentages are low. We're talking 4%. Um, that's not that high. That's not that alarming. When we get to the other poll, which is the one you did assign me, uh, that poll is actually completely bogus and we'll, we'll get to that. Um, a small percentage of the Muslim community are, are radicalized. I get that, but I just want to push back on. Oh, the uh, the Garland thing. Um, they, if they had, not, if we had not, the FBI and some other three letter agencies had not gotten some good intel previously, some actionable intel, and they were there basically waiting yeah. for them. It had been. A, it would have been an entirely from, different from scenario. Muslims, it's worth pointing out. Uh, it was Muslim informants that helped them out. Um, so yes, that contributed a lot. And it is too. Um, so Sam Harris, I've already quoted him before, but Sam Harris said something that I think is pertinent to this. If you're, you know, if you practice Jainism and you're an extremist fundamentalist Jain, we don't have to worry about you. It's the fundamentals of Jainism that keep us from worrying about you. In fact, you're going to be more of a danger to yourself if you're a fundamentalist Jane. You're you you might starve to death, for instance. So <laughs> I, I I just well, want to push back I, a little I think bit. That's a bad example because there 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 aren't enough giants. Right? So so a better example is Buddhism. Okay. Um, well, Buddhist no terrorism. Now there Buddhist, are enough Buddhists for there to be Buddhist terrorists. There, uh, there's and so that that's a real thing. Yeah, the Buddhist. Uh, we did a segment on it already. That they have they are responsible for some very. Uh, <clears throat> very spectacular uh, anti-islamic uh, uh, attacks in uh in hindu um majority countries so they're not off the hook either yeah uh the last thing right. hindu nationalism is another even bigger problem but yeah right uh, no right that's the oh. point is like uh, which which isn't it isn't valid i want to make the point it is a valid example of the problem with religion is that it can lead to these extremist ideologies and to extremist violence. Um, but there's a that's different to say that than to say that we should be scared of all Muslims uh, because of this, right? So I, like rather I than crediting all Islam, all Muslim. I so acknowledge that, what you're saying. Well, I, I, I take that. Yeah, I acknowledge what you're saying. And I take that in, but it seems to me that there are there are more people practicing the fundamentals of Islam currently than there are people practicing the fundamentals of Christianity, even if you include the denominational uh, uh, doctrine versus the Hadith. The I Hadith, mean, if you're just talking, if you're talking about death, death counts in the US, that's not the case. So, yeah, you, uh, you know what? After you have 9 11, more people, more people have died from Christian nationalists than from uh, Muslims uh, in the U.S. And there's millions and millions of Muslims here, so it's yeah. clear that millions of Muslims are super peaceful because they're not they're not like they're not going. If you imagine, can you imagine if a million, just one million of the millions of Muslims in the U.S., if a million of them were jihadists, can you imagine the massive destructive violence that they could they could accomplish? Good in the point. US? Good point. Uh, and so I, so I think I call attention to the fact that Christianity does this too. Uh, and, and it's, it's the, and you could even point out like Buddhism and Hinduism can all lead to it. All these religions, religions are all bad because of this risk. Uh, but that's not the same thing as saying that uh, all, all practitioners of the religion believe these things and, and do these things and they don't really. So, uh, but you do, there is a point you get to about atheism later that is correct uh, that, that we'll get to. Okay. The, the last yeah. thing I wanted to say is you mentioned the family and uh, what kind of influence they have in uh, on the hill, uh, on Capitol Hill. Uh, there, I think it's a Netflix series I watched. Uh, it might be a limited series. Uh, called, I, I forget what it's called, but it's all about the family and the National Prayer Breakfast and the, type, the amount of influence they wield. It's just insane. And that's all I had. If you had any saved rounds on this one, you said you did. There was something else you wanted to say? Uh, no, I think so. I think not. Um, You're good I'll on this I'll give you the one? link to my existing article. I'm going to...
Yeah, I'm going to write another one, and you'll have another article you can add to it. 